Oh. My daughter, there's no way in hell she's going there. But with my sons, I hope they have a great time. And oh, boy. Boys with women. Alcohol poisoning. Oh, yeah. Boys one a year. To to a that bed. happens everywhere. That's youth. Getting pregnant <laughs> is much more harmful than having some uncomfortable sex Hot and starts. getting mugged. The women there are human garbage whose parents don't love them. Just sound. Get it better every second. No time for my second guessing. Grab a mic. It's such a blessing. No time for my illustrations of the columnist and broadcaster Milo Yiannopoulos and the journalist Rennie Edo Lodge. They're in our central London studios for us this evening. Very good evening to you both. Rennie, how do you feel about being called different because you're hardwired differently? Uh, I'm sure it's not something you've uh, failed to hear before. It just seems to keep cropping up. Is it necessary? It's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's 50s thinking, you know. I mean, it's just so ridiculous, this biological determinism. Frankly, you know, interests and talent and, you know, passions for particular topics, subjects, sports, arts, whatever, like, they're not relegated to either gender. But unfortunately, because of some stereotypical thinking, Often, one gender is encouraged to pursue, you know, a sport or an art more so than the other. And, and actually, when you look at um, my colleague at The Telegraph, Radhika Sagani, she wrote um, a piece just this morning speaking to, um, like, young girls who play chess. And actually, what she found out is that they're dropping out at the age of 12, probably because, you know, they're not encouraged or, you know, there's an environment around that's telling them that it's not for them, it's not cool, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, this hardwired brain stuff, like it's, it's, it's retro sexism. So Milo Yiannopoulos, does it matter if men and women are wired differently, have different skills? No, it doesn't matter in the sense that they are equal but different, but it simply isn't true to say that there is no difference whatsoever between the aptitudes of men and women. And it is um, without question true that there are some biological differences between men and women, and we know that from our anatomy. Um, but we also know it from experiments uh, that we do on young children before they've had the opportunity to be socialised, the sorts of toys that they go for. And that holds true actually for other bits of the animal kingdom as well. Some of the reason why girls drop out um, of STEM subjects at college and uh, chess clubs is because they keep losing and one of the reasons they keep losing is that it does seem to be the case that chess as a game plays to some of the male intellectual virtues and when Simon Baron Cohen talks about these he's, he, the way he describes it is um, men are good at systematizing and women are good at empathizing and there is some reason to suppose that that may have some bio, uh, basis in biology it's very trendy these days to say that everything is socially determined but that's not what the science says and it's not either what common sense says because if it were true these days there would be a lot more representation of women in the sciences, in astrophysics, in philosophy, in mathematics and in chess, but there isn't. So, Rennie, does that, does that make sense? And does, does it really matter? I mean, should we just accept that we are slightly different, have different skills, pursue them, or, or should, you know, should we all be striving to be as good as each other at everything? It just it seems really reductive, to be honest with you. I mean, if you look around at your, you know, male and female friends and families you'll see a vast like a huge wide variety and diversity in interests and talents and passions right and also i think that it's ridiculous to assume that the reason why one gender is overrepresented overrepresented in a field is because the other gender is not quite up to it i mean often you know, if a, if a field is homogenous, right, which, as we can see, chess is homogenous, that, that also brings with it a culture that makes things unwelcoming for people who do not quite fit the bill. Like, it's... So, you know, it's almost victim-blaming, in a way, to suggest that the reason why there's an over-representation <laughs> of a particular kind of person is because the other kind of person just isn't quite up to it like it's ridiculous if that was the case my, you know my, i mean we me, don't live in a meritocracy a so it's nice it's nice to have this sort of folks did you miss it or did you hear what this liberal libtard feminist basically just said just a few seconds ago if you didn't catch it let's go ahead and hear it once again listen for it folks if that was the case, my, you know, my, I mean, we don't me, live in a meritocracy. Yeah, so. It's nice. It's nice to have this sort of vague waffle. What did she say? We don't live in a meritocracy.
<laughs> she just said that, folks. We don't live in a meritocracy. My question to her is, why don't we live in a meritocracy? You know what we live in? We live in a place in which victimhood is rewarded. We live in a place where affirmative action is rewarded on the basis of skin color, on the basis of minority types, on the basis of sex. So if you're basically saying there are no differences between them and the reason that everybody is just society puts it on them. So society makes them become footballers and soccer players and baseball players and cricketer play and cricketers and swim whatever. Is that what she's trying to say? That's what this girl is trying to say? I mean, it's unbelievable what these feminists continue to do to themselves. Everybody's a feminist. Everybody's a feminist until something happens in a room where they need to be saved. Then all of a sudden, feminists, they become girls. Anyways, let's continue. sort of everyone has varied interests. Um, what the science suggests is that, for example, um, when it comes to IQ, IQ is distributed differently between the sexes. Now, IQ gets a really bad rap because it's not a great indicator of some things. It's said to be sexist, it's said to be biased towards white people, whatever. Um, the point is that it tests, in this case, it, it tests all of the skills that make you good at chess really well. It's about puzzles, it's about games, exactly the skills that make you good at chess, make you good at IQ. Now, the way that IQ is distributed differently in the sexes is that women tend to cluster around the mean. Women are more likely to have an IQ that is somewhere near the average, whereas men go right to the top or right to the bottom more often, which is why you get uh, great genius uh, male artists and uh, philosophers, but it's also why men fill the prisons, because men seem to occupy um, more of the ends of the, of the IQ scale. That and is so IQ's true. the best measure we have to predict whether somebody will be good at chess. And it, um, what it proves, and what it also proves is that men and women can talk forever. It's been a pleasure talking to you both. <laughs> Before we let you go, though, we'd like to hear some thoughts and some comments you made earlier this week about domestic violence. For our viewers who haven't heard them, uh, here's what Mark had to say. Blokes have lost self-esteem, they've lost their job, they're welfare dependent, they've got other troubles, drugs, alcohol in their life. Uh, it's that loss of self-esteem where I think they use the domestic violence as a coping mechanism to get over all the other uh, crap that they've got in their lives. Obviously this has caused some outrage, Mark. Do you stand by those comments and do we really need to be making excuses for perpetrators of domestic violence? Well, Eddie, the critics haven't done their research, you see. I was paraphrasing there a very important report in New South Wales from the coroner's court where they look at the domestic violence deaths and produce some conclusions about them. and. Uh, uh, they talk about a coping mechanism where men living in poverty, underclass circumstances, poor self-esteem use domestic violence as a macabre, tragic type of coping mechanism. So the critics in this area run on emotion and ideology instead of facts and actually going to read the report. I urge people to read that report. Well, the facts are... And if you are, haven't read it, you're not doing justice to the issue. Mark, the facts are that domestic violence doesn't just affect people in low social economic circumstances, it stretches right across all levels of society, doesn't it? Well, it's concentrated there, Eddie. The basic fact is that for every domestic incident in a middle-class family in Australia, there are 10 in a public housing estate, 25 in Indigenous communities. Uh, that's borne out by crime statistics around the country. That's so true. you can't really deal with this serious issue in a proper way unless you're providing accurate analysis. And to say there's an... And one of the things that's happening is, is that domestic violence, how often is that occurring in upper, upper income families, in upper class families, types of domestic incidents that's happening there? It isn't. Not at the rates it's happening in the lower class or in indigenous populations. It certainly isn't, folks. The facts do not bear that out. Now, does that basically, it's, it's tragic whether it's happening in any family domestic violence, obviously, in any strata of the classes or the masses. Even one incident is way too many. But all this gentleman was basically doing was reading a report, shed some light on it, and the next thing you know is it becomes a freaking firestorm. 
Should that be used as an excuse for men, any type of man or men, for the purposes of domestic abuse? Absolutely not. But a study was published that said that when they found out what was happening and they dug deep into the events that led to the situation to, in terms of the domestic abuse and domestic violence, this is the statistics and this is what they found and this is what they wrote. Epidemic, that's wrong. To say it's evenly spread across the community, that's wrong. To say that it's a product of patriarchy where somehow men have been genetically engineered to dominate women, that's ridiculous. Do you, st so do you stand by your statement that women are, women are safer than they've ever been before, given that there are close to 80 deaths from domestic violence across Australia last year? Yeah, well, Eddie, I urge you to read the ABS personal safety survey that shows I've that since 1996... You have read it? Well, yep. you'll notice that since 1996, the rate of domestic uh, uh, assault and uh, incidences has come down according to that report. So you can only Checkmate. go by the official statistics rather than left-wing feminist hysteria. So you do believe that, in fact, Rosie Batty, from you, quote, causes more harm than good? Well, I don't think it's helpful to demonise men in these circumstances. I don't think it's helpful to go around talking about an epidemic when actually in Australia the domestic assault rate against women in a 12-month period is 1%. Now, I wish it was 0%, of course. We all want it to be 0%. But I know enough about politics to realise that if you want to analyse and get solutions to a problem, you have to be accurate. And saying there's an epidemic, which sort of suggests the rate is 50 or 60%, when in fact it's 1%, that does a disservice to the women in need. That's sort of like what they do with the rape culture, right? They say 20%. Of the girls are being raped at college 20 percent that's one in five if you were a parent if you were a father and you knew that you were sending your daughter or your wife or your whatever it is to go to a college campus where they're saying that the rape culture is 20 percent one in five would you do that 20 percent of course you wouldn't. These are just made-up numbers that are just absolute out-and-out out lies that are being peddled by feminists, leftists, liberals as a way to sort of foment division and foment hysteria. That's all it is, folks. Because you're dealing in fantasy rather than fact. Mark, speaking Yeah, so bloke, true, I, so true. Just, we've just got to be so careful about these messages and, and making excuses for this. I, 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 no one's I just, making no, excuses. No, no one's making excuses here, Mike. What you've got to be careful about is analysing the facts rather than propaganda that people put out there that's not supported by official government reports, official government surveys, and there's nothing I've said that's not factual. Now, we've had uh, a few items here where you've tried to say, oh, well, maybe that's not the case. I've got references, I've got reports, I've got official surveys. Yes, he does. The facts and figures that I'm putting out there. Now, it mightn't be the information that people want to hear, but it's I'd so rather true. have a debate where you can deal in reality rather than left-wing feminist fantasy. All right, Mark Latham, <laughs> thank you for your time. They said I couldn't do it, yeah, they said I couldn't do it. Now they all be running to it, they know. Weaker the strong, who got it going on? Weaker the strong, who got it going on? Because they said I couldn't do it, yeah. Last year we gave away a free handgun with the purchase of any vehicle, and it went over very well. Uh, it spiked our web traffic. We sold, uh, we estimate, 35 extra cars during the promotion than we normally would have. And uh, this year we're trying to sell an extra nice. cars more than we normally would. We're just trying to generate some traffic, generate some interest and enthusiasm and excitement, and it seems to work real well. Uh, you know, we, we're not just going to give people an AK-47 gun, you know, felons buy cars too. <laughs> what we are going to do is we're going to give them a voucher where they can go to their local gun dealer and or we have local gun dealers we would strongly recommend where they can go buy a gun and go through the proper background checks and so that, you know, the guns end up in the right hands. That's so, a great so program. How much money does it, I mean, how much does an AK-47 cost? I'm just curious. It, it depends. Uh, you can get a good AK-47 for $450, maybe $500. You know, some people watching this might think, you know, owning a handgun is one thing, but owning an AK-47 is something else, and maybe this is just a tad irresponsible? No. Uh, it's the American way. But... How about that guy that just had him and his wife killed that had the 12 children? 
with the seven guys coming through the door. I guarantee you, he wishes he had an AK-47 as those, as those maggots busted through his door and slaughtered him and his wife in front of his children. Well, the but purpose others... for guns like AK-47s is home defense. Well, but police officers are shot in the line of duty all the time and they carry guns every day, so maybe some might not think that's a great argument. Well, How are you going to save your family? Supporting chance instead of just becoming a victim. Absolutely. I those guys that broke through that door that used guns to kill those people did not have legal guns and did not go through the proper steps to get them. Those are all illegal guns, and I would bet my bottom dollar on it. I haven't seen the facts yet, but mm -hmm. uh, look, there's a bunch of evil in the world, and, and people need to protect themselves. Well, we're real firm believers. We, you know, we're country folks down here. We live down here, and we're real firm believers in the Second Amendment, and we don't want to become victims. When I live out in the country uh, 15 miles from the dealership here on 1,200 acres, the response time to my home is about 15 minutes. And if I'm counting on the police, and we have a great police force in Bates County, great sheriff, uh, great police in Butler where we live, it's response time still 15 minutes to how great the people are and how good their intentions are. And I would rather defend myself. The only 911 call I need is chambering around. Well, I love that. I love it. I, I, I grew up in rural America, too. We had guns in our home, but they weren't AK-47s. I mean, and, and, and but, but, how long ago was that? when I was a teenager. It was so long ago. Years ago, 30 well, years things, ago. things have changed dramatically. I don't know if you know anything about Missouri. Um, where I live in, in this county, there, there's a tremendous crime problem with people doing meth. And these people are, they, they, they've lost their souls. Uh, they don't care about you, they don't care about me, they care about one thing, getting more dope. Well, and I understand evil wanna... in the world, but I'm no, just you don't. the, the, the um, in a, like a semi-assault weapon to protect yourself. That's all I'm saying. Um, your motto is God, well, let, let guns. Me, me. Your motto is God, guns, guts, and American. Um, why did you come up with that particular that, motto? That, that's a great motto. Actually, it's God, guns, guts, and American pickup trucks. We sell cars. <laughs> right, but you include God in that. And you that's know, right. Why not? Wonder why God is included in a motto that it also includes guns. You don't have a problem with God, do you? No, I don't, but the combination <laughs> some people well, might, between God and guns, some people might have a problem with that. We're a Christian nation. Um, we're, we're Christian people. I believe that uh, 70, 80 percent, I would guess, in this nation would classify themselves as Christians. I'd say 90 percent of the people in this country are, are believe in God, uh, whoever their God is, and to, to try and remove God from everything. I think it's a no, huge no, no, mistake. that's not what I'm saying. I we, I'm saying I think we, I don't putting think we God in a motto that also includes people. guns um, might be a little upsetting to some people. So who cares? Let them be triggered. To ourselves? I'm, I'm confused. I, I, <laughs> you know. I don't know. I, I mean, I, don't think I could God ask you the question, you know, we could do the what would Jesus do? Would he carry a gun? Uh, no, they didn't have guns back then, but I do believe he carried a sword <laughs> if he needed it, but he was so powerful he didn't need any weapon. That is true. Thanks so much for uh, joining us, Mr. Mueller. Man, that car dealer owner. Oh, wow. <laughs> Giving away an AK-47 if you come in and you buy a car or a truck. And they sold, what did he say, 35 to 40 extra cars and looking to do over 100? I mean, that's a great, great way of doing it. Like you said, if they give a voucher, it's not like they give the guns away on, you know, when you buy the car, you get a voucher, got to go in, go through the proper background checks, go to go through the law. And if you pass all the background checks, <laughs> you got an AK-47 that they're giving you a voucher for. Four and fifty dollars take it out of their profits. That's a great way of doing things. God, guns, guts, an American and a pickup truck. Unbelievable. That is so, so, <laughs> that is great. I'm surprised that they'd make more news play, you know, across the nation, uh, you know, other than just in Missouri or whatever. I think that's a great, great promotion. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, like, share, and follow us. Let us know what you think in the comments below. My final thought, as always, 
When you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.